it's obviously about my father, and I'm your co-host, and I really appreciate these wonderful words. Listen, he spends his weekend obsessing over great men because he knows it, and I know it, and all of you know it. Mm -hmm. He will never be a great man. No. Yeah. No. And so well. he is a, my father was his kryptonite in life. Yeah. He's his kryptonite in death. On a personal level, I agree with you. All of us have love and families, and when my father was alive up until adulthood, we would spend our time together cooking, hiking, fishing, really celebrating life, and I think it's because he almost died. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, your life is spent on your weekends, not with your family, yeah. not with your friends, but obsessing, yeah. obsessing over great men you could never live up to. Yeah. Yeah. That tells you everything you need to know about his pathetic life yeah. right yeah. now. After Trump spent his weekend attacking the late Senator John McCain with a series of scathing tweets and retweets on Twitter, his daughter, Meghan McCain, took the gloves off on national television with her response. And what was this all over? What else but the quote unquote fake witch hunt hoax? He settled this week on blaming the fake dossier for starting the Russia probe. And of course, while he's professing his innocence to anyone who will listen, the fact is that the investigation into his campaign's possible collusion with Russia was not started because of the dossier. The FBI began its investigation in 2016 after an Australian diplomat named Alexander Downer reported having a conversation with Trump advisor George Papadopoulos about getting dirt on Hillary Clinton. Oh, and he pleaded guilty and was sentenced last month to prison time. So I'm not exactly sure where the confusion lies in all of this. And look, I get that Trump's entire brand is being a tough guy, but there's gonna come a point really soon when he's insulted just about everyone in both parties and can't find any support. Already, he's butted heads with a slew of moderate Republicans, most of whom he attacked by name after the 2018 midterms. Carlos Cubella, Mike Kaufman, too bad, Mike. Mia Love, uh, but Mia Love gave me no love. And she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. And Barbara Comstock was another one. I mean, I think she could have won that race, but she didn't want to have any embrace. And 12 of whom just voted against him in the Senate to reject his national emergency declaration. On the opposite end of the spectrum, he recently attacked Ann Coulter. The GOP even drew the ire of the oldest Irish Catholic organization in the country on St. Patrick's Day weekend after insulting the Irish with a tweet attacking Beto. And here's the thing about all of this. This strategy isn't working. Democrats beat Republicans by the largest margin in American history to take the House in midterms. And Trump is presiding over a now shrinking Republican party. You'd think that attacking a popular Republican war hero who's now dead might not be the best strategy to pull voters back. Then again, I never read The Art of the Deal, so what do I know? In the meantime, with his political capital all but spent and his endorsement more of a liability than a buoy heading into 2020, Trump's attacks will be on the rise, but so will the pushback. Your life is spent on your weekends, not with your family, yeah. not with your friends, but obsessing, yeah. obsessing over great men you could never live up to. Yeah. Yeah. That tells you everything you need to know about his pathetic life yeah. right yeah. now.